I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome back to another episode here at the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Mark Middlestead. This week, our topic is compassion. And on today's episode of Stress Mastery Podcast Weekend Edition, we're going to discuss true compassion is also unconditional. Last week, I talked about how we can use our prosperity to serve our purpose and question whether or not our prosperity and purpose was serving others. This week, we're talking about compassion. Having compassion for our fellow human beings that we share this planet with is an extremely important part of our spiritual awakening. While we often think about compassion in terms of having empathy for those less fortunate than ourselves, this does not portray a complete picture of what it means spiritually to have compassion for others. It's so easy to have compassion for those who suffer. Deep down, we don't want others to suffer, but oftentimes the people who are suffering the most are the ones we are most apt to judge harshly, thinking they are undeserving, and then we withhold our love from them because we are unaware and don't understand what compassion truly means. We will often see memes on social media or admonish people, to not judge others until we understand what they are going through. While well, I often tell people, whether we understand them or not, we still should not judge them. We tend to believe that when we think we understand the motives behind others' behavior, only then do we have the right to judge them in a negative way. We should never judge another human being regardless of whether they, we feel they deserve the negative energy we put out to them or not. It does no one, not ourselves, them, or the collective energy of the human race to judge others negatively, no matter if we feel they deserve this judgment or not. We are each having our own unique experience and we have our own dark shadows to deal with. We are no better than another, no matter what. To believe that is to say we are superior, but we are all one, each with our own unique experience. When it comes to our spirituality and compassion, we must understand that we are all spiritual beings, having a human experience, and these, these experiences are unique to each of us. There is no right or wrong way to experience life. For many reasons, it is those individuals who behave in a way that cause suffering to others, they're actually suffering more themselves, and they're displacing their suffering and projecting it onto others as a coping mechanism and they are suffering quietly inside, even while their outward behavior belies their suffering. We are all mirrors for each other. Those who hurt others are lashing out because of their programming, completely unaware why they do the things they do. Yet we judge them for being hurtful towards others, and we are unaware of the struggle and hurt they feel inside. From a spiritual point of view, not one of us has the intention of causing suffering to others, but those that hurt the most seem to do the most hurtful things to others, but they're simply unaware, unconscious of their own pain. Often, these people need our compassion more than those they hurt. It might appear to be counterintuitive, but if we really understood deep down what drives their behavior, we would see they need our compassion and understanding 
even more than we may realize. None of us are immune from treating others poorly. Our own programming that causes unresolved pain within us is the exact reason for seeing it in others. They are the mirror for our own suffering, which is why we judge them. We recognize this pain and suffering because we have empathy, and so when someone causes another to suffer, we see both the one who suffers outwardly, but recognize that pain within ourselves that reveals the suffering of those who feel this way internally, but externally cause others pain. I did some research back when I was in school studying psychology on bullies and narcissistic behavior. Every single one of those who bullied others or caused suffering to others were all dealing with a lot of internal pain in their own life. They often were bullied themselves or treated so poorly that the only way they could deal with it was to cause pain to others. In other words, projecting their own pain as a coping mechanism. Because they couldn't resolve it, combined with their own programming, they caused others to suffer because, well, misery loves company, and if they do not resolve their own issues, it will continue to be an issue that gets taken out on others. But we seldom feel compassion for them, only their victims. Of course we should and do feel compassion for their victims, but how many of us feel any compassion for those who treat others poorly? We typically just judge them harshly for their poor behavior without making any effort to understand them or their own pain. They often need more help than the people whom they hurt. The reason we do this is, again, our programming. We see the outward physical evidence of pain and give our compassion to those who we can see suffering. But it is hard to see the evidence of pain lurking underneath those who cause the suffering, and so we just judge them. It's so easy to feel compassion for those where the outward evidence allows us to see it. But spiritually, we're all one, and we seldom understand this oneness on a physical, material level. We live in energy, because energy is what we are, which is why we can easily recognize this energy when it is manifested in the physical world. What is not so easy to recognize is the internal energy that drives our behavior. We know that what drives our behavior is what is held in mind. So when we only use the physical evidence, we dismiss the negative energy in others and we judge them instead of also having compassion for them. We sometimes treat others poorly even when we know we shouldn't, but how many others will judge us unfairly because they don't see the physical evidence for our actions or behavior? Not only do we seldom express compassion towards others who need it the most, we also lack a lot of compassion for ourselves. We forget that we are love itself. Our programming prevents us from seeing ourselves as these spiritual beings of light, love, and positive energy. Our ego sees every little flaw and fault in our own self, and it makes up stories to exaggerate these flaws, turning almost every single one of them into problems we must deal with, but seldom do. Then we beat ourselves up over them. We feel guilt regret, and anger with ourself instead of feeling compassion towards ourself. The first step in being compassionate is awareness. Once aware, the next step is forgiveness. 
We must be more forgiving of our negative thoughts and behaviors, especially those that are buried deep in our past that we have never fully resolved. The longer we hold this negative energy within ourselves, without conflict resolution, the more likely we will keep manifesting it in our life, repeating it over and over again until we actively do something to effectively and permanently deal with it. And how do we deal with it so it stops being a problem for us? We need to slow down every time we're triggered, discover and become aware of the associated program that triggers us and learn to let it go. Not just let go of the negative thoughts or behaviors that keep cropping up, but to truly let go of the program held in our conscious mind. You see, we cannot forgive or have compassion when we deal with our life experience only in our head, our mind. The ego will not let go of it if it has conscious mind control. We need to acknowledge our own internal pain, pause and let go, and forgive ourselves as well as those who may have contributed to our past suffering. But we can never let it go permanently unless we shift our energy to our heart because empathy, forgiveness, and compassion are thoughts and actions that come from our heart, not our mind. Everything in the universe is made of energy. This flow of positive and negative energy is always in balance. But this balance is not always equal, but rather it is always changing and in flux. As such, our level of compassion for all life is in direct proportion to our energy held within. One cannot have greater compassion for another than what we hold within ourselves. If we have unresolved issues that prevent us from having compassion for ourselves, we will project this energy out onto others as a means to balance ourselves. This is why we can easily recognize poor behavior in others and withhold compassion or love from them by judging them in a negative way. But this judgment comes from a place deep within ourselves where we have our own unresolved issues. But we typically lack the awareness to see it in ourselves. Not me. I would never treat another, one that, another person that way. We might say, if we really explored our own selves more deeply, we'd see where our negative judgment is really coming from our ego, and our conscious mind, not from our heart. So compassion is a lot like love. Real love and compassion are unconditional. And just like love, we have expectations and place conditions on those who will be on the receiving end of our compassion. So long as others meet the conditions, we will have compassion for them. But can we remove the conditions and have comp compassion for others no matter what they do? It is so easy to have compassion for those who meet our expectations and equally easy to withhold it from those who don't meet those conditions. Is it possible for us to have compassion for those that hurt others or ourselves? Of course it is. But it may not be so easy to do due to our programming that tells us we must place conditions on people. But real love is unconditional. And so it is with compassion. All are deserving of our love and compassion because love is just not just an action or behavior. Love is who we are. It's only our ego and the programming that tells us to place conditions on it. The real question is, are you spiritually enlightened to the point that you are truly aware that we are all one, 
where there are no judgments or conditions under which we will withhold love or compassion? The next time you see someone suffering, including yourself, see if you can let go of the ego and its control over your conscious mind and shift your energy to your heart and remain open and neutral and withhold judgment from your action and offer love and compassion to those who wish to agree with you, disagree with you, or hurt you. Remember, they are often acting out of the same energy, from the conscious mind, not from the heart, where true love and compassion reside. To have compassion for those who need it the most is how we can change the world. Peace does not come about by wishing for others to change. Peace comes from within, changing ourselves to be more accepting, understanding, and aware that we are all one, and what energy we send out into the world is what will return to us. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by clicking like, share, and subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.